What is up, YouTube? It's been a long time since I made a video. Um, I just want to share like some updates about like what's happening with the channel, what's going on in my life, what's going on with business, how things are with crypto, um, and what I guess like my future plans are, right? And like the main reason I just really wanted to jump back into YouTube is like, man, looking back on my journey on YouTube and starting the Facebook group and solo tradecraft, it's actually done so much for me and other people by just being able to like curate a community and like I made this like post on Facebook like just kind of talking about how like some of the <laughs> like one of the main reasons for my success I feel like over the last couple of years um, and just like learning and being a better business owner and operator is because I've been able to meet other people and cur curate like groups that like talk about Amazon and I've met people through it and it all started with me making videos right uh, i just started documenting my journey and it just led me to like meeting the right people so i feel like if i start doing that again that will continue to happen it just like kind of can't hurt right and that's what i've noticed and i've been in like different stages in my life uh, the last couple years and that like caused me to like not really want to do youtube as you can tell like the last time we really made a lot of youtube content or i made a lot of youtube content was probably two years ago i made a video about like why i quit a year ago i wanted to make another video a year ago just to see if i wanted to get back into it but i think this phase right here of like you know solo tradecraft and when i first started a channel like four years ago it was a good time, but like I felt like it got to the point where I wasn't having as much fun making the content anymore because I just purposely wanted to like put out a video, make sure like one came out every single week or something, uh, just to be with the YouTube algorithm. But going forward, I feel like the videos I want to make are just things that I want to talk about, things that are going to be fun to me um, because this is not going to be my main business, right? My main business is going to be focusing basically on my Amazon business. This is just like a side thing, a long-term plan for me to just kind of really connect and share my journey with people. And that's what I want to do, right? So sorry guys, <laughs> it's been forever since I, I really made content. As you may have noticed the channel, we're doing a rebrand. So it's just going to be me now making YouTube content, just changing it back to me, probably change the banner and all this stuff, but I'm keeping on these videos because uh, you know, just good stuff and i like <laughs> just having all these videos here it's also fun to look at me like four years ago and just see like how far we've all come right but updates wise right so you know with my uh amazon business right now uh, i don't think i ever talked about it but i did start doing a little bit of wholesale kind of fell into my lap and some good business opportunities came about just because people knew about my youtube channel and it led to a couple of people sending uh, me some clients for like uh, a little bit of brand management, but mainly wholesale, I guess, where like I buy from them and resell stuff. So that's probably where 25% of the e-com Amazon private label businesses and 75% is private label. That being said, I also moved into a warehouse this past year during COVID because my warehouse got COVID and they stopped sending stuff out. So I was like, man, I just need to take things into my, into my own hands and I kind of control it. And I also didn't want to like, and so like <laughs> we moved into our first warehouse last year thousand square foot warehouse then moved into a two thousand square foot warehouse after six months because it was too small and on december 1st which is in a couple of days i should get warehouse keys to a new warehouse which is going to be five thousand square feet uh, i plan on showing that in a youtube video uh, i'll show you guys my old one too so you guys can kind of see the steps that i went through and I guess my current struggles in the warehouse, I wish like we had better warehouse like operations in terms of flow and all of that. Uh, but the math works out where it's like our flow and us even working less efficiently than I would like. So it works out to saving a lot more money than paying a, a 3PL um, that we work with to, you know, send our products to Amazon and package and prep and all that. Other than that, you know, I'm spending most of my time right now trying to really focus on working on business, right? Versus working in the business. Uh, and this is like a really core concept that like, I think over the last few years that were made like really, really more obvious to me. And especially with, I had a couple of friends that like started their entrepreneurial career the last couple of years too. And just me watching them, giving them advice, um, trying to share my mistakes is like, I think a lot of people quit their job to start a business but they're just really quitting their job for another job right and what i mean by that is like when you work on your business that means like you're working on like hiring coaching scorecards i'm doing a lot of like systems and processes like building 
like templates, SOPs in my business. That's where I spend like, I want to say like at least 75% of my time. I want to increase it towards like 90, but there's some things I have to still do in the business, right? So working in the business, that would be like anything like say like I'm doing the sales calls or I'm like packing boxes, right? So as you grow in your business and you want to scale it, there are certain tasks that even though you can do it the best, like I can pack boxes great, right? I pack it way faster than my employees, I guess because it's my business, I'm more motivated. <laughs> but it's not the best use of my time, right? And that's what I've been learning to figure out what those things are in my business. So now like, you know, I've outsourced like a lot of things in my business. So the wholesale thing, we've outsourced, I've delegated like the whole process from like sales to ordering, to reviewing the orders, to reordering right uh, to it getting to the warehouse and getting to amazon dealing with amazon cases same thing the private label side a little bit more harder to systematize my sourcing part is what i'm struggling with but as soon as we find like a valid product it gets shot through the system of like packaging creation listing creation getting it to amazon listing setup ppc launches like that part is all automated but i'm struggling with like fixing sourcing right so other things, right? I spend my time hiring a lot. So I think it's key. So I'm like at 15 employees now, 12 or remote VAs. A big shift for me was shifting from Filipino VAs to Latin American employees because of the same time zone. So I really hated the fact that I think some of my Filipino VAs would like message me at 12. I would respond like 12 hours later and then they would actually get the work done another 12 hours later, right? So I just felt like it was a little bit slower and I like to be there and I'm pretty good about like answering questions on Slack as fast as I can, right? But you know, when you're in the same time zone, it's a lot faster, right? So now I can uh, kind of experience this. I can definitely see why having like people in an office, it could be more productive, but you know, there's pros and cons to everything, right? Um, and then coaching, right? So after I hire, I spend a lot of time coaching certain new hires or coaching the manager that is overseeing the new hires, right? So I'm just like reviewing like how they're giving feedback, what systems and steps they're going through, what different little milestones they have in their training process is, right? And then the systems and processes, this is me like being inside of like ClickUp and uh, Asana and Quip, uh, figuring out like what steps X, Y, and Z for this process, right? And one of the most important things in business is like how do you make it repeatable Right, so you just get repeatable results, and then you can just throw people into it and scale it. Right, once it's like all built out. Right, so that's where I'm really focusing on, and to kind of help basically understand if my systems and processes are going good. Right, we have scorecards. Right, so scorecards are, I think, a really important thing to have in business too nowadays, where it's about essentially if you were stuck on an island the way they describe it, right? The best way to describe it is like, if you were stuck on an island, what are like the one to five stats per department or for your overall business is what you need to know if your business is on track, right? So it could be like sales, how many items per hour prepped in the warehouse, how many items source, what's the net profit of items in production, right? How many new wholesale accounts did we open? How many wholesale calls were made? Just different things like that in different parts of the business, right? And it makes it very clear when you're doing reviews with your team, like, hey, are we doing a good job? Are we going to meet the goal for the quarter, right? If not, you know, revise and wherever. Um, it also makes firing a lot easier too, uh, right? Because if you guys come to agreement on a scorecard, they don't reach it, then it's very obvious that like, hey, like you guys, you didn't meet the requirements. So for this reason, we have to let you go, right? And when it comes to hiring, or <laughs> firing, right? Firing should never be a surprise, right? So that's like one of the ways like I've really changed my business in the last two years was by implementing scorecards on the EOS model, right? Um, I believe it's what it's called. So I've like, I loosely based my scorecards off of that, but it's been really good. Another thing that I really want to start doing on YouTube, kind of start talking about too, is crypto, right? So I've been in the space, crypto space, since 2011, but more financially in it the last like two years. And it's been really good. This past year on paper, right, you know, it's never truly profits until you take it all out. I've made more money in crypto than in my actual Amazon business, right? So. It does deserve a level of focus and I feel like I do want to talk about it more because it just 
kind of consumes my life and I just need to like spit out like what I'm learning and my knowledge to the universe because I feel like I can help a lot of people a lot of people can learn from me and I love when people tell me I'm wrong about something right one of the biggest things I learned in Amazon space was I would spit out ideas about like how to rank items how to do this right someone would correct me someone would tell me I'm wrong and like I am very happy when people do that it's like I'm like oh yeah like you guys just saved me from doing a dumbass mistake you guys are the best, right? I did start a Discord, right? So as of yesterday, uh, we just uh, started a Discord. We got 180 members inside already within 24 hours, which is pretty cool. Uh, I would say a good mix of this crowd is actually, it's funny, we were just talking about this. A good mix of this crowd is gonna be the business and e-com folks that are in here, plus people from the Seller Trade Craft, uh, Amazon FBA community, and then my friends from Instagram and Facebook, or basically in real life friends that are interested in crypto. So that's kind of like uh, the premises of this. But what I do mainly in crypto is I put, I, th so this is gonna be updated from time to time and just like, this is gonna be a brain dump for me, right? So I hope this page is like, if you're new and you look at all of this, like you're gonna, I think, learn a lot. Um, I post about like how to learn, some discords besides mine that I think you guys should look into, Twitter recommendations, my current holdings of all the coins that I'm holding. And I plan on making videos about um, some of these projects depending on interests, right? But like, you know, the feedback I see in the YouTube comments, feedback I see in the Discord group about how I can help. But I would say like, in terms of crypto, right? My goal is to turn my six-figure portfolio to a seven-figure portfolio. I tend to invest and hold, right? So I don't swing trade like weekly or I don't daily uh, trade. Like that's just like not my thing. I have a business, right? I don't have time to do that. So my goal is to, how do I get the best return on time, right? So for me, my goal is just to generate passive income through DeFi farming, right? If you don't know what DeFi farming is, like I think you should learn about it, right? You should pay attention about it. If you don't, like, you're missing out on like one of the biggest opportunities of your lifetime of our generation, right? I feel like it's early dot com eras, right? Like the stuff, the way the crypto industry is now versus was three years ago is way different. And I'll jump into that more in a crypto video. And I just want you to understand that crypto is only a side business for me, right? Um, I think that if you don't have a lot of income for investing, your focus should be learning how to make more money, right? It, you want to get to like a certain point where you have money to invest, right? And you're not like, I guess, making these dumbass gambles in crypto, right? Um, and you can kind of like not have to touch that money, right? So most of the money I put into crypto, like I've never taken it out. Like I just put it in there and it's just like, I keep rotating, right? I'll rotate into like different projects, into different coins. Like right now, I would say like I'm, I have way too many projects that I'm like interested in and have money in. Um, so I'm slowly going to start consolidating positions, right, to like a certain dollar amount or a certain percentage of my portfolio, essentially. And another thing too is like, you know, before I even invest in crypto, I'm maxing out like my 401ks for like my business, my Roth IRAs and things like that, because those are going to be tax free. I invest in it mainly because it's tax free, right? And I guess by the time I'm 65, I'll get access to it or we can do the withdrawal penalty, whatever. But, you know, you should take advantage of it, right? But the returns way lower than crypto, eight to like 12%, whatever it is a year. I, I, mine are a little higher because I have like, I don't only do index funds, but either way, like I don't really like paying attention to stocks because the upside isn't as crazy as crypto right now. And I am 29. All right, so for me personally, I just want to take a lot more risks right now before like I have a house. Uh, I do have a house, but before like I buy like a, a house house that like I really want, like the cars and you know kids and like take care of my family. So I'm trying to do all like the DJ and stuff now and like kind of go crazy with it while I'm younger, uh, when I can take this risk and I don't have like people just like depending on me, all right, for this. So that's kind of like. This. So when you guys get into Discord, I highly recommend you guys, you know, just check this out, join, say hi, post stuff with what you guys are learning about here in crypto. Let me know in the suggestions and feedback, you know, like what you guys are kind of wanting to see in terms of YouTube videos. Super helpful, you know, gives me an idea of what you guys want to see. And then life, right? Let's talk about life. Before I talk about, I guess, this list, um, I didn't I didn't say I sold Pixelfy. So as you guys know, one of the best things that happened into because of my YouTube career, I think, 
is that I got to start a software company. You guys didn't know I was an MIS major back in college. And I always thought I was going to go work for like Facebook or Google or one of those companies or get to be part of a startup. Um, but that didn't work out, right? I ended up quitting my consulting job to do Amazon full time. Amazon was great. And then I, I was like, oh, I still have like an itch to do it. Met this guy named Leo, Fernando Nick. We started out Pixelfy and we recently sold it earlier this year for a good seven figure chunk, which was really cool. One of the biggest milestones of my life, one of the best experiences of my life. Um, definitely got to scratch that startup thing. I would love to do that again in the crypto space, but it would have to be on the right project, right? So I know that my talent isn't like the coding guy, but the guy that can possibly be the liaison between the business and the software side. And that's what I've done in my corporate career in college, Pixelfy with Rebate Key. Right, so that's going on. But yeah, in terms of life, in my last video here, I kind of talked about like all the stuff I was really struggling with when it came to like my mom, stress, depression. And that was probably like the biggest low that I've ever experienced in my life. But it made me like more appreciative of like, I guess everything that's going on now, right? That I have and I'm really happy to be in a position where I am, where like I'm not financially struggling anymore or ever really was, but like, I feel very financially stable, right? Because I had that exit, I have a pot of money that like, if I didn't want to do anything for a few years, I could do it if I wanted to <laughs> for a while. But that's not like my main goal anymore, right? So my main goal is like, it is to focus on me, but a long time, I think if you guys been with me since the beginning of my YouTube journey, was my biggest focus was like, I wanted to bring my mom home from Puerto Rico. And that last fall we had, in that last video I made, we talk, I talked about like a fallout I had with my mom and what happened about that. And you know, the best advice I got was like, if I wanna take care of other people, I have to take care of myself first, right? So that's the big focus. So just a lot of focus on me, mental, wealth, and health, right? And then relationships, for sure. I would say because of COVID, I actually think me and all my friends are like better friends <laughs> in a way. Because of it, we've just been spending more time with each other and it's because like, now, things are just associated a little different after, I guess, these past two years. Other than that, big milestone event that happened in my life is uh, me and my girlfriend uh, moved into together, which has been pretty interesting. It's been a lot of fun. This is our place right here. We have an apartment in Houston. Uh, before, I used to live in the suburbs in a house that like I paid off. So now I'm paying rent again, which is maybe not financially the best decision, but it's a really cool decision to have in this next phase with the relationship with the girlfriend my girlfriend kathleen and things will be good other than that you know just to kind of summarize like why i want to make content again um and i talked about this i guess in my face in my facebook post but like i said it's just like i've gotten so much out from just talking about my journey and sharing it and it just led me to meeting the right people and i don't think it can hurt if I keep doing that, right? And I believe the more I share, the more that I'm gonna attract like-minded people that are gonna be able to help me and the community. And I love, I, I realize one of the things that I love in the past five years too that I've learned about myself is, I think it's an Asian thing too, but I love helping other people and I love helping other people make money. That's like, I don't know, I like that for some reason. Like when people make money because of me, like it's like a level of satisfaction that like, I love that shit. So if I can help make you money, that's really cool, right? If I can, you know, give you this crypto tip that like changes your life, it's awesome. So like, funny story. So like I have this uh, dice that's on my, I don't know if you guys see it, but it says Chainlink on it. But my buddy told me about this crypto coin, right? Chainlink a few years ago, maybe like four or five years ago, I bought it for five cents. Like right now, I don't know, it's bounced between like 15 and $35. That's been like one of my biggest crypto bets ever, right? And it kind of starts like that, right? So in these different discords of like how like I ended up investing in all these different coins, right? I'm talking about, it's like, it's because I heard it from a friend or I heard it from a Twitter. And then I did my research in like a bunch of discords groups about like each one of these projects. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. Let me throw some money into it, right? And then some of these like just really pop off, right? And another one will pop off. And then sometimes like people will be like, hey, you should take profits. It just like blew up way too much. And I'll rotate in and out of like different coins, right? But yeah, at the end of the day, you know, like I just want to start making some content again. The, but the focus is more is going to be on videos that like I kind of just want to talk about. I don't want to just like force it or anything anymore and make this feel like a job, right? So 
I'm optimizing life to like have fun and make money, right? But that's like how I want to do YouTube and you know, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, thanks guys for watching this video. That's basically my little rant about like what's been going on with my current situation. I'm sorry, I've been MIA for a while. I don't know if anybody's been like really waiting and eager <laughs> for content, but I think I have like some content that's gonna be fun it's gonna allow me to express myself in a creative side, all right? And then I get to talk about crypto, which is like where I'm spending like most of my free time, just like on Twitter, Discord, talking to my friends about different projects that they're working on. And then another thing too, that like I think you guys should know too, is that whenever I go to Puerto Rico, like I have a lot of friends that move to Puerto Rico for like the tax purposes, it's like 0%. If you don't know what the tax purposes, uh, breaks there it's really good basic right you pay basically four percent income tax and the way it works is every time i go there there's always a bunch of econ people because i know econ people but every time like the people i meet there that are not econ people it's generally crypto people and they're always young right i'm like if these guys figured it out and the main two demographics i always meet in puerto rico are econ people and crypto people like I think I should pay attention to crypto, right? And like, it's really worked for me in the last couple of years um, and it's changing all the time and it's fucking cool, like the stuff they're building there. Um, so if you're like into tech, like you like seeing software development stuff like get made uh, and these different Lego blocks getting built on top of each other, like I'm telling you, like pay attention to DeFi, subscribe to the channel um, and I'll share it with you guys like what I'm paying attention to. Uh, but other than that, I'll see you guys around.